Hey Nuts, hey we're gonna, this is where all the admins here on the Nuts group, um, this is Sterling, this is Sydney, Stacy's behind the camera waving right now as we speak, um, we're gonna do a few videos, we're gonna, we start, we decided, we sat down and talked, we're like what kind of videos do we want to start doing for the Nuts group, we decided to start doing the basic, let's just do a basic setup for all you new guys, um, but between all four of us, we've got over 300 species, a lot of years of knowledge, we want to all contribute that and so we're going to start doing some more advanced stuff as we go S species specific a lot of cool stuff we got a lot of cool stuff we got in mind but we're going to start out with the very bottom so today we're going to do a couple setups um first off we're going to do we're going to do two setups right now um sterling's going to run us through the the terrestrial setup sydney's going to run us through an arboreal setup but these are made for full-grown adults we're talking as far as the arboreals, six inches at least. Terrestrials, we're probably looking at least three inches on this setup. Um, but you gotta realize that as you go through, there's there's different setups as you go. I mean, these are for little guys. I mean, actually, we keep our little tiny half inch slings in cups like this. I mean, you don't put a small spider in one of these. These are for adults. Um, these are the water bowls. You know, they're soda pop cups that we use in all of these, everything needs a water bowl. I mean, this cup doesn't, they're so tiny, a half inch, but once you start reaching an inch and a half, you start putting them in stuff like this, you need to pull your, your cups off your soda bottles and use them as a water bowl. Every spider needs fresh water. So, but that's not what we're focusing on, but we did want to hit that point and let you know that, you know, if you're doing these, you do need those water bowls, these kind of setups, we'll do those down the road. But to start off, Sterling's going to do us a, a terrestrial setup right now, and he's going to run us through kind of what, you know, it's not how to do it, it's how we do it. So if you've got a different setup and you've got a different idea, please comment and let us know. But this is a good, it will, this is what we keep ours in, all of us keeping these in, these kind of setups, and it works really well for us, and he's going to run us through it. So guys, before I even add anything into this, I'm going to clean the, the cage. I'm going to use just water and vinegar is personally our favorite. That's going to get everything away. It's not going to add any chemicals and then I'm going to let it completely dry. So what I've got in here is just peat moss. Some people use different things. They use um, vermiculite and mix in that. So I'm going to do that about two inches. Um, depending on the species, you can add a little bit more if they're more prone to burrow, but it's not necessary. We've got a water cup in here. They're not going to drown if they're big. They're if it's big enough, they're just gonna they're gonna get out of it. So you're gonna want that to have water in it at all times, fresh, clean water. You're gonna want to have about three times the length for the spider, and then a shallow fall. If they're gonna fall, you don't want it to be very far. So that's what I've got here, and I've got a hide. That's just gonna give them a little place to you know go and get away in solitude. And that's pretty much what I've got for right now. Nice. And it's a basic setup. It's, it's easy. It works great. Um, awesome for terrestrial teas. I know a lot of people keep their terrestrials in 10 gallon aquariums. The only thing with 10 gallon aquarium is we want to make sure we add more dirt. Less fall. Like he was talking, you know, we don't have very much fall here. No spider's going to get hurt by falling from the top to the bottom. If you put them in a 10 gallon, it's very, it's very common. A lot of us do it. I've got some sturmies in that. And we just want to make sure we add more dirt or add foliage. Make sure it cushions that fall. If they ever come to the top and fall to the bottom, you want to cushion that fall. So Sydney's going to walk us through a arboreal. Okay, so what we have in here is just the regular peat moss that we were talking about earlier. You can mix some vermiculite with it if you'd like. Um, we also have the sphagnum moss in it, um, and that does add extra cushion as well as humidity. And what these ones need is just a nice vertical height that you can just prop up in there. And again, it has the nine ounce deli cups for the for the water dish and that's basically all you need to keep them happy yeah they're, they're a, it's an easy setup and all of us have done it and the only thing we want to do is really the reason we're doing this is not because people have said we don't know enough of uh you know that people don't know um how to set them up it's just what works and we want to hit on a few things that we've seen happen one thing we have seen happen is the problem with these both these enclosures they got screen tops okay humidity is going to escape from these very high 
The reason why I do the peat moss in this arboreal is because it's going to keep that humidity. You can spray it and it'll keep that humidity a little bit higher. It keeps the tea also on the ground. Um, with these, if you get, if you put a, a, a G rose in here, it's going to be fine. It's going to be happy, especially with the water bowl. Missed it once a week, going to be fine. You put a genic or an LP in here, they need higher humidity. And with this screen top, it's going to escape. And you're going to find it hanging on this top. The one thing we have done to salute, uh, to solve this is put the, just the plastic like you would to wrap up your um, leftover food, you know, hot glue it around here and then cut out of that a hole. You want to do it on the inside, not on the top. If you put it on the top, it'll rust that screen because it keeps that humidity against that, that. So you want to do it on the bottom. And you can do the same on these tops. You can put the, put the plastic on the bottom, hot glue it into place. It'll keep that humidity in and just give them that enough of that ventilation, what they need. They don't need that whole much. Um, most of our, our stuff, we have ventilations on the side and you'll have that problem. But with these, you gotta be aware of that. The also other thing that comes up and it's so common with every question we've done is, is heating, okay? A spider does, your, tr your, your spider will do good between 70 and 80. You get above 80, you got problems, especially with a lot of species. You get in the Pamphibedia species, 80 plus is a big problem. Okay, you get start getting below 70, you also got a problem. So 70, 80 is a good range to go. Some people keep their houses a lot cooler than that, you know, with the air conditioning going and stuff like that. We don't recommend lights. Um, this is what we recommend is these pads. They actually got a sticky back, you can peel and post on stuff. For a terrestrial, we just want to put it underneath the the dirt itself and, and plug it in. It works perfect. It's got a buffer with the dirt to keep them so the spider's not right against it and it won't hurt them. Heat rocks and stuff like that, spider will get on it. it, it can hurt them. So that's why the heat pads come in well. With these guys here, you can also put it under the bottom just like you would with the terrestrial, but this has a backing. You can see the backing where it's not clear. The backing is probably an inch, inch and a half thick. You can actually put, put this right directly on the backing still gives that buffer to the spiders not going to get too hot too fast lighting heat lights are a big no-no you're going to kill your spider may do good as a small one but the problem is with lighting it's not going to dry the enclosure out the problem is when it molts it's going to dry the molt out so it is the bigger the spider gets the longer it is for it to molt and as it molts that lights on that molt and it's going to dry it out and it's going to hold its legs it's going to make it harder for that spider to get out in the time it needs to get out. Everybody knows, as we've done this with nuts, and people have asked me, you know, my spider's not eating, what can I do? I says, always add more humidity. You got a desert species, you got a uh, gramostolas, or you got the brachypelmas, I always say, add more humidity. More than usual. Because in the molt, it needs that humidity to get to have time to get out of that molt safely and reharden. The light will really diminish that time it has allowed to get out safely. So we want to get rid of lights. If you're using lights, get rid of them now because I've not met anybody in this hobby that said a light's a good deal, you know? Everybody's in consensus, lights are bad, okay? But as far as that, that is the basic setups. They work really well for us, but you know, we're all hobbyists. We want everybody's inputs. You know, if you found something that works best for you, if you like, if you say vermiculite straight works great, let's hear why. Let's see how it goes, you know? If you're saying, you know, get rid of peat moss, get rid of cocoa fiber, let's do this other substrates. The only thing I have found is if you do, um, a lot of people have, have done the, the potting soil. And the only thing with potting soil is a lot of it has pesticides, which will kill your spider. There are some natural, nothing added potting soils you can go through. And we've experienced with some of them, they do okay. But everybody give your input. Let us all contribute to this hobby. That's why we're doing these videos. We're going to do a lot more. We've got a lot of stuff in the works. We're just starting with basics, and uh, we appreciate everybody in the Nuts group, and we just want to say thank you.